Hey folks, part two of the demand curve. So again, we are looking at the relationship between quantity and price, law of demand. And to reiterate, as the price of a good decreases, you, the consumer, will consume more increase. Now, we talked about in the last video uh, what factor would cause a movement along the demand curve. And we talked about price changes, right? Price changing today because the market we are focusing in today's present time. Today we want to focus on the shifts and the demand curve. So unlike a price change where we started on the y-axis, a shift in the demand curve, we are going to start on the x-axis. So now we can draw our market. We focused on coffee, Last example, on the x-axis quantity, we can put here cups of coffee. Here we have our point zero, the origin, on the y-axis price using dollars. Okay, we're using the demand and supply equation where we have five and five as our equilibrium point. Here we have a max quantity of 10, that's five cups of coffee. $5 and $10. Now we can put point A where 5 and 5 intersect and draw our demand curve. It is a downward sloping curve. That's where you are. And draw the upward sloping supply curve where producers, in this case Starbucks, is producing cups of coffee. So I'm going to show you the shifts in demand, thereby starting on the x-axis, thereby creating a new demand curve. And there are four main factors that would shift the demand curve. Number one focuses on your income. So when income increases, you are going to consume more goods. And when you consume more goods, you will demand more goods. And when you demand more goods, the demand curve is going to shift to the right. We can call this the wealth effect, that you feel more wealthy, hence you will consume more goods. Number two, we'll focus on what you like, taste, and preferences. So if you really like something, you're going to consume that good. And when you like something, the demand curve will shift to the right. The third factor that would shift demand is the number of consumers either entering or exiting a market. So when consumers are entering the market, perhaps because the store just opened, there's a higher likelihood that consumers are going to consume goods when consumers are entering the market. If this were to happen, the demand curve would shift to the right. And number four, we're going to focus on the price expectation by consumers. So again, we have the word price, but we also have the word expectation. So when you expect the price of a good, you are now thinking in the near future. Again, we're focusing on price change today as opposed to you expect the price to change in a future date, maybe tomorrow. So for example, to keep the consistency of the man shifting to the right, you expect the price of a good to go back to its original price tomorrow. So we can put here in parentheses, sale ends today. If you know that the sale ends today, and tomorrow it's going to be back at its original price, I think you are going to consume the good today. 
Hence, the demand curve will shift to the right. So all four of these factors are showing you that the demand curve is going to shift to the right. And now we can see our graph and illustrate a demand curve shifting to the right. We can now call this D0, D1. This is clearly a demand shift to the right. And now I want you to see that we have a new market equilibrium at point B. And as you demand more, maybe six, maybe seven, it puts pressure on the price of a good to eventually rise. So when you really want something, it puts pressure on price to increase. And that's why we see the demand curve shift to the right. Now, when you look at point B, we can see supply and demand intersect at point B. Unlike the previous video, we saw a market failure. In this example, there is no market failure because we have cleared and now we have a new market equilibrium where producers and consumers have found a new point that both could agree on the quantity and the price of a good for a transaction. And that's the demand curve. The opposite would be true that if we were to decrease income, you are going to not like this good. Consumers are now going to exit the market or you expect the price of a good to decrease tomorrow. The demand curve would shift to the left and we would see instead the demand shifting left as such.